Good morning. Welcome to Legacy Cast, uh, your finance and legacy podcast. And I'm James Snow, your host for this event. And I'd like to welcome my brother Richard here, Richard Kaufman, who is uh, an expert in all things health related, as far as I'm concerned. How are you doing, Richard? I'm, do- I'm so blessed. If I was any more blessed, I would be twins. That's how good I got it. Oh, that's perfect. That's perfect. Glad to have you here this morning. Um, so let's go go ahead and uh, kind of get, get into this this list of questions I put together here for you, if that's all right. Oh, definitely. Shoot. I'm, I'm better with question and answering than I am telling a story. So, no, oh, that's fine. You know, we, we, we might get in some storytelling here, you know, depending See, on that, the time. That, the, that's the good thing about ADD. Yep. Yep. <laughs> so, uh, as far as uh, the question of legacy, what does that mean to you, Richard? Um, legacy is, uh, I had an epiphany probably about five years ago. Um, I went to a funeral and like only two people showed up and I started thinking, you know, when, when I die, I want them to have four or five different services. I want the place to be jamming because I've helped so many people mm-hmm. and I want my six year old daughter to, you know, to be able to talk, look back and say, you know, my dad actually changed the world, even though it was only one person at a time. Yeah, and, you know, I like your answer there because you know, really to me and, and what I've seen you know, in what I do uh, as a, a financial professional is really a legacy isn't just about the money. It's, it's about the story. It's a story that you're putting out there of what matters to you, what you did that made a difference, you know, the people that you influenced, you know, the lives that you changed. That, that's the bigger legacy. And you know, even with, with our businesses is what kind of a, a change have we impacted you know, through, through our professional life? And yeah. so, so it's, it's not just, you know, a financial story, but it's, you know, it's the big picture. It's what, what difference did we make while we were here? Yeah. So you I, know, I, I love your answer there that, you know, you want, you know, you want your daughter to have a story there that she can tell. And obviously, you know, her legacy is going to be building on top of yours. And so. Now the weird thing is like, I had an uncle now he only had a fourth grade education mm-hmm. and he, he uh, died a multimillionaire. And we were sitting in his yard. He said, son, I have all this money, but I can't buy a day back with my kids. And that kind of impacted my life to where, you know, money's fine, but you're not going to buy it. You're, you're trading time for money. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Because, you know, at, at the end of your life, when people are asking, so how much did that person leave behind? You know, the obvious answer is, well, all of it. Yeah. So, you know, what we leave behind is the difference we make. It's not, yeah. it's not, it's not about the money. Well, when I met, I met Gary V about probably about eight months ago, when we were talking, he said, he told me that try to be humble because at the end of the game, the king and the pawns all end up in the same size box. Yep. So I, I guess I try to live my life that way. It's very true. You know, it's, you know, like they say, you know, death is the great equalizer. You know, it doesn't matter where you started. You know, you all end up in the same place. So that, you know, that's where I want to create my, my legacy is, you know, sure. great, great. Positive, positive stuff. So uh, since we're, we're kind of talking on those, on those lines, uh, do you feel that legacy obviously is an important consideration for people to, you know, to spend time on? Oh, definitely. Because then you can actually start looking at the big picture. Mm-hmm. You know, like a lot of times you'll start focusing on, all right, I'm going to work my job and put 80 a hundred hours in a week, but then all of a sudden your marriage is failing and your kid, you're going through divorce and your children, you, you see your children every once in, you know, once in again, mm-hmm. what kind of legacy is that going to be? You know, you, you, you'll have money, but you know, you're still going to be, you know, you'll be sad, you know? So that's if, with that, with money, if you have money and you're an asshole, you're money, you're an asshole with money, you know, but if you stay humble and have money, you know, that's when you can start building a legacy and looking long term instead of the short term. Yeah, uh, one one mentor that I had uh, in the past, uh, he would, you know, he was someone who you was able to succeed, obviously. And what he said is, you know, money doesn't buy happiness; it just makes you miserable in a nicer neighborhood. And <laughs> and you know, I kind of think about that as, you know, I, w- I would rather be happy in in a bad neighborhood than miserable in a nice one. Yeah, but like you said, it's good to have. You know, it's good to have money now. I've come from both spectrums where I've been homeless, drug addicted, living in a car. Wow. And now I have my own house and a business. And, you know, yeah, I can see where 
having a little bit of money. Like yesterday, my air conditioner broke. Mm -hmm. Okay, put it on the credit card. You know, it's $1,000. It's no big deal. It's not an issue. Mm -hmm. But when I was homeless, $1,000 would have been insurmountable. So, you know, I, I could I could see how money can help a lot, you know, and you could do a lot, you know, help a lot of people. Like when I when I moved to New Jersey about eight years ago, I only had 50 bucks in my pocket mm -hmm. and I had a friend come to me. He was about to be homeless and I only, and I gave him 50 bucks. So that was the same 50 bucks I had that he I gave him to be able to do something. Wow. That's huge, man. That's huge. <laughs> so. <clears throat> So how does your, your thinking of, you know, legacy philosophy, how's that, how's that play into what you do as a business? Um, well, what I do, I, like I said, I moved here, it's almost nine years ago. Mm -hmm. And I partnered with a guy in GNC, General Nutrition Center. Right. And I bought into his philosophy. He doesn't just want to make a sale. He wants to build a relationship. Mm -hmm. And I've seen that now – with him, the people he took care of in high school are bringing their high school children to, to see him. So he's mm -hmm. building um, generational relationships. Right. And that's something that I want to do in everything I do. You know, even like if we become friends, me and you are friends now, we'll always be friends. Right. You know, right. it's that relationship. Mm -hmm. And that's how you build your, your legacy, I think, for me, is the relationships that you, that you keep. And that's very true also with what I do, because when, when I'm sitting down, for example, with my clients, I'm, I'm building that relationship with them, but, but at the same time, if they have children, I want them to also be part of that process because chances are that client is going to have their children wanting to come to meet as well. Exactly. So that, that's going to be that multi-generational relationship that I'm building with, you know, with my clients is because their children will come to me because they, they've learned to trust me and, and have learned to trust the advice that I give them. Yeah. And so, yeah, that's, that's the way it should be is, you know, well, a lot of people, like, um, my wife drives my wife crazy. Cause everywhere I go, I know somebody like we were in Disney and I had somebody, Hey Rich, how are you doing? You know, I'm 900 miles away and people are saying, <laughs> where I go, I know somebody like we were in times square last week. Somebody knew me, you know, and I figured, mm -hmm. you know, the more people I touch, the better life is. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, that's, that's the real collateral right there. Yeah. So if you're thinking about your business uh, kind of in its future, uh, from, from a CEO standpoint, what would you say the three things are that keep you up at night the most? Um, one is dealing with, like, the Internet. That's a big thing is in my business is dealing with the Internet. That would probably be one. Mm -hmm. um, two would probably be sustainability. And I really don't stay up. I actually spend more time talking to people that are in the business than uh, worrying about my business. I'm more spending more time helping other, them build their business. Mm -hmm. In other words, then they help build my business. Okay. So those are, you know, like I'm always going back and forth with all the sales reps, with all the owners, you know, just, just like you said, just building those relationships. Okay, cool. So, so you think probably sustainability is the big thing within your business that you'd worry about? The oh most? yeah, because like, like GNCs, like there's five of five GNCs around my area, mm -hmm. and we double or triple whatever they do. Okay, but there's so many GNCs that are going out of business. Right, right. So it's kind of like it's you know even with the internet, you know, you get people that are buying stuff on the internet mm -hmm. and have no clue what they're buying. And then they try to come and return it to the store. Yeah. So we, yeah. we have to educate people. So that's, I think that's what, that's where our sustainability is, is actually building the relationships and, you know, uh, actually teaching people about, you know, health, fitness, stuff like sure. that. Sure. Sure. And your world and my world are very, very similar in that, that, you know, the more people know, the more empowered they are and the more powerful they are. And actually like in our store, we probably turn down about 40% of sales because some people really? like they'll come in, they'll bring like 400 hours worth of stuff. And sometimes they'll have two or three things that do the same exact thing. Mm -hmm. So we 
take those products and put them to the side and tell them you don't need it. And they look at you like you lost your mind. They're like, wait a minute, you're, you're turning down money. I'm like, well, if you don't need it, why spend the money on it? And it builds that trust. Right. Right. You know, and a lot of stores don't do that. They just go for that, the kill. And then they don't have that relationship because if people get home and then they look on top of the refrigerator, there's $500 worth of product. Their wife's pissed off mm -hmm. and they'll never come back. Yeah. And when you're, when you're honest and transparent about it, that's, that's going to build that trust factor. Yeah. Like I also have my own blog, but what I do is I actually try every product mm -hmm. that I'm given. So I'm actually giving honest reviews and so that people know they're, they're not getting bullshit at all at all because hey. they, they know where I'm at all the time. They could just come see me, you know, that's pretty solid right there. Yeah. It's fun. You know, I get to help people. Life is good. So do, do you believe Richard that uh, it's important for people to create a strategy for themselves and their business or do you think it's not okay for them to just kind of wing it? I definitely think you have to have a strategy strategy but i think you also have to it's the people that you hang around with mm -hmm. you know it's the people that it's what books you read it's what podcasts you listen to you know like my business started off like i'm with the gnc now right. i'm eventually moving away from it to actually um do more speaking on addiction and health and fitness right and have, you know but it it seems like, you know, sometimes if your your business is going one way, it can take other turns, especially if you're dealing with learning from people like yourself, mm -hmm. pe people like Steven, people right. like Andrew, you know, mm -hmm. stuff like that, or people like Gary. You have to have a, a, a plan, but your plan has to be flexible. That's true. That's true. Because, you know, especially, you know, from what I see in my practice is, you know, you can have the best plan in the world, but if, if it doesn't bend, you know, with, with the wind, so to speak, then you know, it's, it's not really a good plan because well, like Mike, T Mike Tyson said, everybody has a plan until you get punched in the mouth. That's right. So sometimes you have to jab and move, you know? Yeah. It's like a, the old saying, I think it's a Chinese uh, prophecy or something, a Chinese proverb that uh, which tree is stronger, the willow or the oak? And, and really, the, the willow is a stronger tree because it bends when the winds blow and the oak can shatter. And so, you know, which one really has the, the greatest strength? Yeah. Like in my business, years ago, you would be able to just build a brick and mortar and people are going to come. Mm -hmm. that's, just, that's just not the way of the world anymore. Nope. You know, people, rather, people rather just sit home on their couch eating bonbons and ordering stuff off Amazon. Mm -hmm. You know, so... <clears throat> So what do you think uh, is the most common reason that entrepreneurs uh, are going to fail or just give up? They think it's easy. They think, okay, well now it's, um, it's the in thing to be an entrepreneur. Mm -hmm. You know, you can see people on like say Instagram, you're 22 years old and you're a life coach. No, you're not. You know, <laughs> <laughs> you're not, yep. you know, but you think, you know, it's, People don't realize that when you're a business owner, mm -hmm. you ha it's like having a second wife. It's yeah. like, you know, you're there 24-7, seven days a week, and you have to do it year after year after year, or else you're not going to be successful. That's true. That's true. And, and a lot of people that, that I talk to, especially, you know, new in business, they're thinking, oh, well, I'm, I'm going to be able to quit that nine-to-five job and, and I don't have to work as many hours. And the truth of it is, you know, probably the first three to five years, you're going to be working, you know, 60, 70, 80 hours. Yeah. It's, it's not going to be, you know, getting less hours. You're going to be doing more at the upfront in order to build that empire. And then ultimately you can, you can scale back and, and, you know, reap in you know, the benefits of some more leisure time. But in the beginning, you know, you're, you're not going to be doing less time. You're doing more time. Yeah, man. And sometimes even in the middle of it, you're going to start having to put in more time, for, for me, because it's like all of a sudden our numbers drop in half. So now you got to hustle twice as much just to make the same kind of money that you made before. Mm -hmm. So sometimes you have to actually 